Here we go. My friends, today we have over 20 minutes of obscure Mario Golf lore and miscellaneous trivia. Mario Golf is a game for the Nintendo 64 which I spent countless hours playing in my youth and still play every now and then, having gotten on another kick of it recently. The game has an indescribable, ethereal soul with incredibly comfy music, and I personally find this game to perhaps be the most nostalgic of all for me. Unsurprisingly, for most good N64 games of its time, the game has a ton of depth, hidden secrets, easter eggs, and modern lore, which the gamers who have continued to play it have contributed to over the years. So get comfortable, pour yourself a warm beverage, and enjoy this deep look into the 90s nostalgia of the mystical Mario Golf 64. There are some interesting scenarios which unfold when watching the leaderboard as you play through a tournament. For example, if you play the Mario Star Tournament, your main opponent will usually be Bowser. If you eagle hole 1 on Mario Star, which is pretty common as it's a drivable par 4, you will usually see yourself at minus 2 and Bowser at minus 1 after this hole. However, if you follow this up by birdieing hole 2, getting yourself to minus 3, you'll then see Bowser at minus 4. The only way that's possible is that Bowser got a hole in one on the 391 yard par 4 second. A par 4 of that length is not really drivable for most characters, and so I figured I would take Bowser out for a spin in training mode and see if I could do it. And frankly, it doesn't seem like Bowser can drive this green, even with maxed wind settings. With a perfect drive, you're still about 30 yards short, so this hole-in-one by Bowser, something that can be clearly deduced by watching the scorecard, is literally impossible to perform. Did Bowser cheat? Did Bowser get wind faster than what is conventionally possible in the game? Who knows, but the scorecard definitely tells the story that he made a hole-in-one on the par 4 second. The regularity with which Bowser gets his impossible hole-in-one on Mario's Star Hole 2 is simply too insane. Not only that, but if you get to hole 6, Bowser's often sitting at 8 under par, and then after hole 6 he's at minus 10, meaning he got another hole-in-one on this one too. While this is a par 3, and holes-in-one or aces are much more common on par 3s, for Bowser to get an ace on both a par 4 and par 3 in the same round is just unbelievable. If you do enough scoreboard watching, you'll see other places where your main opponent in each tournament gets some holes in one or other insane shots. Perhaps someday I'll do an even deeper dive on these remarkable, unseen opponent shots. Another funny thing I love is, on the Yoshi's Island course, your main opponent is not actually Yoshi, rather it's Unagi, you know the eel from Super Mario 64? Trying to imagine Unagi swinging a golf club competently and finding his way around a course is just such a silly sight to ponder. So every character in the game has a unique animation that plays for different scores on a hole. Bogey or worse, par, birdie, and eagle or better, which includes things like hole-in-one or albatross. Eagle and better animations are the best, of course, with all the characters getting pretty happy, DK throws a barrel, baby Mario tries to fly, but Wario's eagle animation is particularly interesting as he summons a large W letter amid his celebration. What's interesting though is that the color of this letter will match the color of his outfit depending on which skin you've selected. Take a look. I genuinely did not know this until replaying through recently. Wario isn't exactly a character you often select, but it's just an amazing attention to detail. The various characters in the game have different nice shot animations when you hit a wood club. The Mario characters, Baby Mario, Metal Mario, and Mario, get a nice fireball. Yoshi and DK get a rainbow following their ball. Most characters don't get a fun animation, just having kind of a powerful smash. However, two characters, Bowser and Wario, have unique animations. Bowser has a strong yellow laser shot, and Wario's shot gets hit by lightning. Nice Wario sure has a lot of unique features for being such a villain. <laughs> An albatross in golf is one of the rarest feats of all, where you score three under par on a single hole, usually two shots on a par five. 
or a hole-in-one on a par-4, but that's usually just called a hole-in-one instead. So albatrosses are usually associated with par-5s. Par-5s are usually quite long, barely reachable in two shots, so albatrosses are quite rare. But what if you could drive the green on a par-5, reaching it in one shot, thus setting up an albatross putt? I tried for hours as a kid, driving the various par-5s with Metal Mario, which seemed close, but could never quite reach any. However, Nintendo 64 gaming legend Shadow of Miles has this clip on his YouTube channel showing doing exactly that. In training mode, on hole 7 of Mario Star, with the wind maxed out at exactly this angle, with the point of impact under the ball and slightly off to the left, Miles barely lands the ball in the green, setting up an albatross putt, which is just not something that conventionally happens in golf. It's amazing that the game even has a screen programmed in for Albatross Putt, though it does look more raw and less refined than the other screens. The Albatross Putt screen is a truly remarkable and obscure piece of Mario Golf lore, which very few people have probably ever seen on their own cartridges and TVs throughout history. After a few hours of attempts, I was able to pull this off myself too. I tried a handful of times in a few sessions without getting it to work, despite doing an identical setup to Miles. So I have to think there's at least some element of RNG or slight variance on each character load or hole load or something like that. And when we're talking about landing the ball at 390 yards, barely on the front edge of the green, these minute differences do matter significantly. So if you try it out yourself, it might take a few resets or loads to make it happen, but it is definitely doable, and it's truly amazing to see. And no, before you ask, it does not seem possible to get a hole-in-one on this par-5. The area where the ball lands is just too sloped to get it towards the hole. But hey, that's a bit greedy anyways. And for what it's worth, a hole-in-one on a par-5, or 4-under on a single golf hole, is sometimes called a condor, but the accounts of this happening in real life are just so few and far between. So ring shot mode is an added challenge of hitting the ball through all the rings on a hole and still making at least par or better. These have become the source of much community challenge as well as just doing it for a personal challenge. I remember myself trying to get holes in ones or albatrosses on some ring shots and having a fun time with it. That being said, gamers are always up for a ridiculous challenge and so I once came up with such a challenge which I thought was possibly the most difficult ring shot conceivable. On hole 5 of Shy Guy Desert, which is called Shoot for the Stones, there's this one ring off in the distance. Now, with Metal Mario, you can actually drive through the ring with the right wind, and then get up and down in three shots from the waste area for par. So this in itself is not too challenging of a completion. However, the idea I conceived was, would it be possible to lay up in the fairway, and then with your second shot, clear the ring, ricochet off the rock wall, and get the ball into the hole for an eagle 2 on this par 4. It seemed like it might actually be possible, since with a few tries, you can probably end up at least getting the ball onto the green with your second shot. Well, Mario golfer I Am But Pixels, who held numerous world records throughout his Mario Golf career, decided to give this challenge a go. He had many close calls over numerous sessions, but then finally, after 24 hours of grinding the shot over and over again, he hit this shot. I did it! I did it! Yes! 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 Oh my god, dude! Oh god! You timer! Yes! Honestly, I find this to be one of the most impressive feats ever performed on a Nintendo 64. It was truly remarkable when it happened, and in my opinion, there are few challenges so difficult and clearly definable on the console. That being said, a handful of other Mario golfers have taken it upon themselves to perform the feat themselves in the years since. And I just did the rock shot. Neat. And I am Butt Pixels hit it for a second time based on a random dare from chat. But I will always remember the first ever successful Rock Shot Eagle. This is really good. Oh my god. Dude. You guys took me 47 minutes to take slot amounts. 
You're not getting your money back. See you later. There are 36 total ring shots in the game, and thus various challenges have been sought out beyond just scoring par on each hole. Princess Peach's ring is a notoriously fascinating hole, a par 3 designed as Peach herself with the ring all the way over here. So ideally you have to lay up in the rough or sand trap way over on the left side of the course, and then get up and down the tiny green from about 100 yards for par. Doing one better and holing out for your second shot for birdie is a pretty obvious challenge that many Mario golfers have tried over the years. And there's this clip of Shadow of Miles doing just that. He has many great shots and I would love to do a deep dive on his Mario of Golf videos sometime in the future. I've hit the shot myself, but it seems my recording of this has become lost media after a cartridge data reset. That being said, a non-ring shot is the coolest shot I've ever seen on this hole. Mario Golfer A Standard, while speedrunning the game, got this incredible shot on the same hole, hole 16 of Mario Star. That's probably a little short, or in Off the Rock. Please somebody clip that. That's all I ask. Please somebody clip that. That's right, his ball was short of the green, but bounced off the rock, hit the flag, and landed in for a hole in one. Now that, my friends, is just truly, truly remarkable. A Standard actually just uploaded a nearly one hour compilation video of the greatest shots he's hit over five years playing this game, so if you love seeing amazing Mario golf shots, definitely check that one out. The link will be in the description. In Mario Golf 64, there does exist a mini golf mode with two courses, Luigi's Garden and Peach's Castle. There are 18 holes each, and believe it or not, every hole is hole in oneable Shadow of Miles has videos of him doing exactly that, uploaded in four distinct parts, since these were uploaded before you could post something longer than 15 minutes on YouTube. But seeing some of these clever and tricky holes in one is just truly stunning, and I can't help but wonder just how many people have aced every hole in Mario Golf's mini golf mode. When you visit the character select screen of a completed Mario Golf file, you will notice four obvious holes where there could or should be more characters. These are characters who you can only acquire through the Game Boy Color version of the game and transfer them over to the N64 with the transfer cable. Given how few people probably had all the equipment to make this happen back in the day, there are probably very few cartridges with all the Game Boy characters on them remaining, and it's far from an easy task to make it all happen. The Game Boy Color version plays more like an RPG with leveling up, and so at a maximum level 99, once imported to the N64, some of the characters can hit like 400 yards, which is way further than any conventional N64 character, and breaks the game. You can pretty much eagle or even hole in one every par 4 in the game, and may even be able to get the elusive hole in one on a par 5. So yeah, it's just not all that realistic. You know, not that the game as a whole is, but it takes it a step further. That being said, I would love to play around with these characters, going for low scores and speed golf records, but alas, it would be such a journey to collect all the pieces and play enough of the Game Boy version to make it happen. There is this video from Mario Golf player Metal Yoshi Gamer showing him play all the courses with a strong kid character, so that's pretty cool. And you can see just how much these extra long drives break the game, easily shooting like 28 under par without breaking a sweat, a score usually reserved for the absolute best world record speedrun performances. Something like 36 under or even better is almost certainly doable with the maxed Game Boy Color characters. One final thing about the character select screen that I have yet to mention is that there's no Metal Mario on the Japanese version. Metal Mario is the best character, and he hits furthest among non-Game Boy Color characters, and has the most shapeable shot pattern, which helps immensely at high levels of play. So it's a huge loss not having him on the Japanese version. Alas. Watching the credits for Mario Golf 64 reveals some fascinating lore and trivia. A name that comes up under character voices is Penn Badgley, who fellow gamers might not be too familiar with, but in all likelihood, any woman or friend in your life will almost assuredly know is a handsome actor starring in the Netflix series You, and having been on 2010's iconic CW program Gossip Girl. He's spoken about this in the odd interview, 
He actually voiced a kid named Kid, one of the Game Boy Color characters. Here's a clip of Kid celebrating with Penn's voice. Nice eagle! Yahoo! Yes! Another odd tidbit is that they misspelled Charles Martinet, the iconic Mario voice actor. I could hardly believe it when I saw it, but they ended his surname with two E's rather than E.T. It seems insane they would misspell the name of THE iconic Mario voice actor. But hey, Mario Golf credits, many secrets to behold. I also find it interesting just how much they incorporate the Game Boy Color characters into the credits, despite the vast majority of people who played likely never unlocked them. So it's pretty well known that if you tie in a versus or get character match, the game does go to sudden death, which takes place at night, which is actually pretty awesome. This is the source of my most viewed Mario Golf clip on this very channel, uploaded in 2010, where he got an albatross at night in a versus match against Metal Mario on the fourth playoff hole at Toad Highlands. Another cool feature is that whenever you finish a hole at night, you'll get a blast of fireworks in the shape of whomever the host for each course is. You know, Toad or Koopa or Shy Guy. What's funny though is that if you end up tied for first at the end of a tournament, there's no playoff. You just win. This is particularly silly because, you know, in real golf tournaments, tournaments are usually when you do get sudden death playoffs to determine a champion. So why they didn't add a playoff feature at the end of a tournament when you end up tied is beyond me. I guess they figured they would have to program in the character model for Unagi or Shy Guy or Koopa, and that was just too much to get to. Oh, and here's another interesting tie thing. So as I mentioned, if you are playing get character or versus match play and are tied after 18 holes, the game goes into sudden death where you play at nighttime. And this fits with the game because as you play throughout the 18 holes, the sun starts to set towards the end of the course. So that's all fair and good. But what happens if you remain tied for 18 more holes of sudden death? Well, intuitively, you might think it should become daytime again. You know, you've played all through the night. But my friends, it does not. It just remains night forever until sudden death is settled. I suppose the programmers just never accounted for this rare and frankly near impossible situation where you continue to tie for 18 straight sudden death holes. You can really only do it if you're trying to intentionally tie, and it's made a lot easier with the save states put into the Nintendo Switch Online version. Personally, I love the nighttime vibes of the courses. It just gives them a different flavor from what I've played through so often in my life. And the cool fireworks that go off are just the icing on the cake. There are a number of surfaces and lies where your ball can land in Mario Golf and from where you can play the next shot. Fairway, rough, bunker, these are ones common to most golf courses. Some of the lesser common lies are waste area, which occurs mostly in Shy Guy Desert, rock, which occurs throughout most of the later courses, and bare ground, which can be found anywhere near ponds and water. There's actually one lie that was cut from the game, according to the cutting room floor, cartway. This would have tried to emulate when you land on the cart path in a round of golf, which, if you've ever played yourself, would know is not too uncommon. I've certainly played my fair share of shots from cartways in real golf. For one reason or another, cartway never made it into the game, but I do love this screenshot showing that it once existed. The music in this game is something so sublime which can only be understood by immersing yourself throughout the courses. It was composed by Matoi Sakuraba, who also wrote for Star Ocean and Golden Sun, so it's no wonder why the music is so blissful, ethereal, and moving. And of course it uses that beloved Super Mario 64 sound font as well. It's not just the tracks and all the courses, but it's also the songs you get in other areas and modes. The training mode theme is particularly peaceful. I spent countless hours in my youth just trying to hit ridiculous shots in training or practice mode, listening to this beautiful song. The Mario Golf soundtrack truly brings back some divine memories. The Four Yoshi's Secret Song is a crazy Easter egg in Mario Golf that I had no idea about until recently, despite this being one of my most played childhood games. Those who played Mario Golf love the music as I mentioned in the previous segment. There are six courses in the game, all usually with two songs each. 
one competitive spirited song for the tournament mode, and a usually comfier, more blissful song for the other modes. But there is one exception. If you play any course in stroke mode with four Yoshis or four DKs, you get this secret song. This genuinely blew my mind the first time I heard it, and it must just be one of the most little-known hidden songs on all of the Nintendo 64. What's the longest drive you can conventionally get in Mario Golf 64? Well, using the cast of non-Game Boy Color characters, Metal Mario hits the furthest, with his driver power shot going a stock 313 yards. That being said, if you have a heavy tailwind and catch the ball from underneath, you can frequently hit it in the 380 to 390 range, even sometimes toward 400 in the right circumstances. There's one hole in particular, Yoshi's Island Hole 13, which is built perfectly for a super long drive. You see there's this massive hill around 340 yards into the par 4, and so if you drive it in just the right spot with an ideal tailwind, you can get the ball rolling down the hill all the way down onto the green towards 410 yards. There are a handful of other holes or situations where you can get it towards 410 yards with Metal Mario and a perfect tailwind, and this is as far as I know the longest drive possible in the game using the natural in-game characters. Monilu is a Spanish language influencer who posts content which many have dubbed retro grunge, incorporating topics like 90s bands, VHS era effects, and of course, Nintendo 64 video games. One of her posts went viral when a Twitter user captioned it with this. You slept for a long time, babe. You kept rambling about virtual currencies and World 3. Are you alright? The game she is playing, or at least the intro screen cycling on her 90s cathode ray tube television, is Mario Golf. The post generated considerable nostalgia, with many internet users wishing they could go back and re-enjoy the 90s in their full glory at what felt like a much simpler time. But perhaps it truly was a simpler time as well. Perhaps their nostalgia is not misguided one bit. Perhaps if we just go to sleep, while listening to the Mario Golf practice range training theme, it'll all be okay. Alas. So there's a look at some obscure lore in Mario Golf 64, in a way, a kind of love letter to this childhood favorite game of mine. A game I played almost as much as GoldenEye 007. If you enjoyed this, let me know, and perhaps I'll do more Mario Golf videos in the future. As always, a like and a comment are always appreciated to help with the mystical algorithm, and if you want to support the channel and my work even more, you can check out Speedlore on Patreon, where I post the most regular updates about the ongoing Speedlore series, and occasional exclusive content. With all that being said, Thanks for watching, stay true my friends, and I'll see you in the next stream or video.